Now, Tony Hawes announced he's standing down as Director General of the BBC later this year, but he's with me this morning. Uh, Tony morning, Hall, if we think our way back to mid-February, not so long ago, relations between the government and the BBC were pretty low, and the government was briefing into the press that they were going to whack the BBC. Have relations improved? Well, um, th there are uh, parts of our relationship with government which are, uh, as you know very well, which are the testing parts of our relationship, which is we, we, we are here to be impartial, independent, mm. seekers out of truth in all our journalism. And, 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 uh, and so there's always going to be a distance in that sort of relationships. But, but during the COVID crisis, we've worked alongside the government, for example, on our huge education programme, uh, which is the biggest education programme we've ever launched in our, in our history to supply uh, young people, uh, uh, children at school, parents who were seeking things for their kids and teachers with, with education materials. And we worked alongside the Department of Education for that. And uh, on our big night in, uh, we worked alongside DCMS and the Treasury who said, uh, OK, if you're doing a big fundraiser and for the first time bringing together uh, comic, comic relief and children in need, well, we'll match whatever money you, uh, you make, which again is good. So, so I think there's, a, there's a, a, a proper relationship. Have you had a conversation yet with Boris Johnson about the future of the BBC? No, I, I, I haven't, but I'm thinking plenty about the, about the future of the BBC. And I think what uh, is interesting about the, the, the COVID crisis is right back at the very, very beginning of this crisis, we thought, right, how can we <clears throat> do uh, a service which the public in this country are going to appreciate and need at the biggest crisis any of us have ever faced? And that's why we put a big, big uh, uh, boost in what we're doing in, in information, in our new mm. services, making sure we can keep those mm. going. And the teams have yeah. produced the most wonderful, wonderful programmes why the education uh, um, uh, development I talked about was also being key and also actually in terms of bringing us all together because the country also needs to be brought together and I think we've done that for example on VE Day or with our local radio stations where we've had over 600,000 people have been helped from our local radio stations in their community. But there were problems before all this started and Oliver Dowden who's the culture secretary mm. has warned the BBC against adopting what he calls a narrow urban outlook. Yes, I think the, the notion that we should be um, uh, reaching out into the uh, whole of the UK is, uh, is what I subscribe to. I said um, earlier in the, in the new year that I felt that a greater proportion of what the BBC does uh, should be uh, out of London. I think the strengths of the COVID crisis has been that we've seen our local radio stations yeah. performing fantastically well. We should have routes mm. uh, across the nation. And indeed, when you look at one of the strengths of the BBC creatively, it is that it represents uh, uh, the nations of the UK and does that very well and also finds talent across the nations of the UK. So I think that is part of our, uh, uh, our um, particular um, role that we can play for the British people. I also think, by the way, the diversity of thought, I've talked about that a lot, I think is a very, very important for any organisation. You don't want people who all think the same. You want people who are going to argue with you, bring different ideas into the mix. I suppose it's about metropolitan attitudes, though, which could be London or Manchester or whatever, but it's a difference between the metropolis and the way people think way outside the metropolis. There is a divide here, and there's a very big perception the BBC has been on one side of that divide and not spread across it. Yes, I, I don't accept that, to be honest with you. I think uh, half the BBC is outside London, uh, uh, both in terms of the money we spend yeah, and the right. people. And actually, I think this is one of the strengths that we have that we can reflect. As you've been hearing, for example, on the mm. Today programme in the morning, you've heard from uh, our local radio correspondents mm. talking about how COVID and the crisis is affecting their areas. There is that sense that we are really reaching out okay. into communities, which I think is important. You talked about lots of things the BBC has been doing during the Covid crisis, but at the same time the BBC has been pulling in its horns in all sorts of ways. There's been shared radio bulletins for news, mm. uh, various news programmes have come off air, and of course a lot of the drama can't be made at the moment for obvious reasons. Is perhaps the lesson of this crisis that a smaller BBC is a better BBC? So I think uh, I take my hat off, uh, if I had a hat on, to all the people, the programme makers, journalists and others who have been doing amazing things. I mean, 92% of our organisation is now working from home and producing excellent programmes. Programs. What I think we've got to do, like any organisation has got to do, is to learn from that yeah. and see where we think, you know, the stuff we're doing there, we should take forward into mm -hmm. the future. We shouldn't go back to the old ways of working. We can do things more simply uh, uh, and maybe with more focus uh, and then build on the things we've learned. So we've learned, for example, one area, culture and quarantine, where we've been working with arts councils, working with arts uh, organisations, mm -hmm. working yeah. with artists. Why? Because we know there's a, there's a crisis in the arts for how they find their way to their audiences. We can help with that. Now, that's something I think should carry on mm -hmm. after this crisis. So I think there's a lot to learn and we're going to learn. During the crisis, we've lost about £125 million and so forth. That must mean a smaller BBC going ahead. 
It's a BBC which is uh, uh, certainly not expansionist and certainly having to make sure we spend all our money wisely. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're working on making sure that we, we can do that. Um, but, you know, uh, I'm not going to moan about that. And I don't think inside the organisation we should moan about that. You know, when the, when, the, when the whole of the country is going through and the whole mm. of the world indeed is going through the crisis that it's going through, uh, we need to, to play our part, but also demonstrate we can be a real public service for the nation in a way that I think... Uh, all the people who are working in this organisation are proving that they are. It's very interesting you say play our part because one of the reasons we've had a, a hole in the budget at the moment is the, uh, the fact that we know we're going, the BBC is now going to fund over 75 mm. licence fees. Mm. That was delayed until August. Are you going to delay it again? There's nothing new to say about that. The board took the decision to uh, uh, delay, as you were saying, uh, a few few months ago. Mm. Uh, we're preparing for a, a, an August launch. But on the other hand, they've also made it quite so, clear at the so time, they made it quite clear at the time, uh, that they would review the situation near the time, and that's exactly the position. There's nothing new in that. So pensioners can expect to start paying in August? The board have said they'll review it near the time, and that's, to my mind, is the appropriate thing for a board to do. Let's talk about the licence fee more generally in that case, because can I ask you straightforwardly, in 20 years' time, will we be funded, will the BBC be funded by the licence fee? I think what you've got to, you've got to start with a different, uh, a different proposition, which is, do you think that there is a need for a uh, public service broadcasting either network, BBC, ITV, Channel 4, or one, uh, the BBC, which is providing things that brings us all together. And if you start from that premise, you then say, well, how do you fund that? That's and the, the licence fee, and that's the key question. And I mm. think what the COVID crisis uh, has proved is that people uh, in their droves, 94% of so, the population of the, of the UK have turned to the BBC for either information, education, or entertainment during this crisis. So the question is, and by the way, so, it's not a question that needs to be answered until 2027 when the charter comes to an end. Yeah. The question is, what's the best way of funding that universally so everybody in this great democratic idea gets something that we can all share? And yet we know the number of people paying the licence fee has dropped pretty sharply in the last five years. And there seems to be an, a hint, at least, in the BBC's uh, submission to the government back in March that we are thinking in a slightly different way. In some countries, the, commission, the, the consultation document says the DV licence is linked directly to an existing common household bill. This is, we're open to exploring that option, which would of course allow, if it's linked to a bill, there to be a gradation of payments, not one simple payment linked to ability to pay. Is that something the BBC uh, is seriously uh, considering? I, I, I hope, and this is a personal view, I hope that there will be um, a big debate about the best way of funding the BBC. I hope even when I've left, I can take part in that debate and we should look at um, the easiest way to pay, learn from what happens in other countries. Um, are there fairer ways uh, to pay? But the underpinning for all that is the idea of a, a BBC which is providing something for everyone, whether you're rich, you're poor, you live in the Peak District, the Scotland, the, uh, or, or wherever. There's something that, um, uh, that you're getting from the BBC for all this. Now, and I think what the COVID crisis has demonstrated is that there is still a need you know, uh, for a universal broadcaster that brings us together and gives us shared information, shared education and shared entertainment. But it might not be paid for by the licence fee as we understand it today. I think we should be open minded about, I mean, my own view is it would be a licence fee because that's where you'll probably come back to. But we should look at, can you make that fairer? Can you make it more proportionate? Can you uh, charge it in different ways? All these questions should be answered between now and 2027 when the uh, new charter comes in. You took BBC Three off broadcast and online, and you're now reversing that decision. Does that mean the original decision was wrong? I think we've learned, and actually, I think it's uh, absolutely right that organisations should learn. We took it um, um, off uh, off uh, linear um, four years ago, three years ago, because we wanted to save money, but also because we thought we could really launch it as an online vehicle, because that's where audiences were going to be. And it's been a fantastic creative success. You know, normal mm. people is just the latest example of how well that's done. Um, uh, but uh, what we've also learned over the last uh, couple of years is that if you've got your linear channels or normal channels working alongside an on-demand service, that works really powerful, uh, powerfully. And that's why we're thinking about bringing it back as a linear channel. How worried are you about the BBC losing younger audiences? Because if you look at what's happening in streaming services, for instance, Disney Plus, Netflix and all the rest of it, they are roaring ahead and young people mm. are leaving the BBC for them, and there doesn't seem to be much we can do about it. Well, um, um, I think there is, um, and for a kickoff, actually, what's been happening in this crisis is young audiences have been coming back 
to the BBC and finding the BBC, not just for new services, but also for entertainment. And that's why, um, going forward, that's the importance of developing our iPlayer, developing uh, our sounds, and making sure <clears throat> that our new services are in tip-top uh, 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 position for young audiences to come to come to, and and that's exactly what we're doing. And when you look at the figures for you know uh, for something like normal people, you see how successful we can be creatively, making sure we're doing the things that will bring young audiences. But because we're the BBC, pay for everybody. That doesn't mean abandoning older audiences. We've got to make sure that the broad public get real sure. value from the BBC. Back in January, the BBC lost a very important employment tribunal to Samira Shah, mm. uh, uh, Samira Ahmed, I beg your pardon, over the equal pay issue. Looking back at your time as Director General, is equal pay the biggest stain on your record? Um, I think uh, I look back at what we're trying to do with the culture of this organisation uh, and uh, I've been trying to change it. I've been trying to get it right. Um, I inherited bluntly a system where you didn't know whether you were being paid uh, 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 equally because, you, because all sorts of different systems of pay and reward were across the organisation. In the middle of that huge reform, uh, people raised equal pay cases. And actually, whenever you're reforming, that, that's exactly what often happens. So um, I hope that uh, uh, to be solving those issues is how uh, I will be judged. But do you think that equal pay over the years has been something the BBC has been terribly complacent about? I think all organisations have been uh, complacent about it, to be honest with you, Andrew. And, um, and I hope that the systems we now have and, uh, uh, in operation and the way we now look at equal pay uh, and also fair pay, which is a different thing, but equal pay particularly, uh, that uh, we can get these, these, these things solved. I also want a different culture for the BBC. I think the culture has been too, um, uh, too top down. I think uh, I want people to come and work here, not because they're going to get huge amounts of pay, but because they feel they can really do the best work of their lives. And that, in, that in includes uh, people feeling in the, in the workplace that there's a, a balance of people. It goes back to diversity of thought, male, female, all sorts of different uh, uh, diversity of thought in the workplace, which means it's a really good place to be. Now, in due course, I'll be talking to somebody else, your successor. What qualities does that successor need? I'm, I'm not going to uh, get into uh, uh, thinking about my uh, successor in that, sort of, in, that sort, in that sort of way. I think what you do need to have uh, in this job is a profound belief in public service broadcasting. I think that's important. And a realisation that to preserve those things that matter, you have to adapt and you have to change. And I think the history of the BBC has always been one of adaptation from radio or wireless through the colour television to iPlayer. So whatever you do, you take the values you stand for and adapt them for the future. And I think that's what teams here have been doing brilliantly through the COVID crisis. And if they ask you to stay on longer because of the crisis, will you say yes? Oh, I've just said from the, from the beginning of this, I'll just stay on and do my job. I'm focusing on the job. Uh, steering the BBC through this crisis from January through to now is all absorbing. And uh, I shall do it for as long as uh, the board wants me to. Tony Hall, thanks very much indeed for joining us.